Hey, gaming family. I'm your host, Cheyenne, and I'm excited to welcome you back to video four of Code Along. In this video, we'll be learning how to add and edit scripts to objects, which will allow us to customize actions and effects in our game. We will also be building level three of our obby, the contaminated ocean. Ugh. So let's dive into Roblox. Well, maybe not dive, because you know, get it? Dirty ocean water. Ugh. <laughs> If you are closed out of Roblox Studio and need to find your obby, then go to File, Open, from Roblox, and choose your game. In the previous videos, we added objects from our marketplace to our obby. Each object was unique because of scripts. Scripts written into the object allow the creator to add custom actions and effects. Let's learn how to customize our objects through scripts. First. I will need to build out level three a bit to make it look like the contaminated ocean. Here's the vision I was going for. To represent our ocean today, let's copy our floor from level two and paste it side by side to create level three. Rename the floor in the explorer to the polluted ocean. Ugh, gross. I'm going to change the color in the property screen to a reddish brown to show that the water is dirty, but you can choose any color you'd like. So how are we going to pass from level three to level four? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Let's add a secret pathway that we can navigate through. And since we have an unhealthy ocean, we're not going to show any animals here. Why don't we instead design it so that the player has to jump from trash pile to trash pile to cross? Let's start simple with a single block part, then make it more complex in the later levels. Select the block part and rename it to secret block one. I want the trash pile to appear, then disappear. If it appears, then we should be able to jump on it, but as soon as it disappears, we'll fall into the ocean. Like that floor is lava game, you know, where you're like, ooh, ooh, don't touch the floor. But the ocean, right? Now, let's add our script. If you hover over the object, a plus sign will appear next to the name. Click the plus sign and a drop down menu will appear. Type in script and choose the first option. You should now see a script icon under secret block one. Also, when you create a new script, a script tab will open next to your base plane. The new script will have a default code saying print, parentheses, hello world, parentheses. Oh, well that's nice, but I have to delete it sadly. Okay, hi, bye. Now let's rename our script to fade block because we want the block to fade in and out. It's time to start writing our code inside the fade block script. I want to create a variable. In Roblox, variables are names associated with values. Think of it this way. We have a filing cabinet in here. You know, that big, clanky, heavy metal drawer your parents probably have in their office? In our virtual filing cabinet, each drawer would be a variable that can hold various things, such as text, numbers, and objects. The name or label outside each drawer tells you what's inside the drawer or what the variable contains. Because we're working on the first secret block or secret block one, we'll name the variable or the folder in our filing cabinet example, secret block. Now, this will store the object the script is located in as its value. In our case, the script is located in the secret block one object. Doing this will allow us to select and edit the object. And local means we want to use the variable only on this script. Now that we can edit the secret block one object, let's add the action to make the block disappear. I'll use a function which declares an action on the object. This means it will give instructions on what action we want to happen to the object. The action we want is to make the block disappear. Each function name is followed by a parentheses and the function stops at the end. Let's give our function instructions on what we want to disappear. Inside of your function, let's grab the transparency property from the secret block one object. The properties of the objects are located below the explorer. It is currently set to zero transparency, which means we can see it. 
Transparency is on a scale from zero to one, with one being invisible. To start the action we created, we'll write it below the initial function, except without the words local function. Let's see if our disappearing function worked. Go ahead and press play. Whoa. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Am I disappearing? Hold on, wait, what's going on? Hold on, wait, I don't like this. I don't like this. Where, where are my toes? If it worked, then the block will be invisible. If you walk over to where the block should be, it's still there. You can't see it, but you can still run into it. Hey, you did that, okay. Looks like the script worked because the block turns invisible. Let's write another function called appear below the disappear function. I'm going to select and change the transparency property back to zero. Great, now the block is visible. Then select the can collide property, which controls whether or not the player can collide with or touch an object. We can set it to false when the block disappears and true when it reappears. That means the player is able to collide with the block when it appears, allowing them to jump on it. But if it's not there, then they will fall into the ocean and womp womp womp. Game over. Not over over, you know. They'll restart at the last checkpoint. The disappearing block is cool and all, but I want to make it even more challenging. <laughs> I want to set a timer that will determine how long the block stays visible. So I'll control when the block appears and disappears. I know, I know. I'm so I evil. Know. <laughs> to do this, let's set a timer. We can use something called a while loop. A while loop loops through a block of code as long as its specified condition is true. We will also use a built-in wait function, which takes a number representing how many seconds you want to wait before you go to the next function. So I want to loop over the disappear and appear functions. So while my for loop is true, I'll do this. Wait for five seconds, make the block disappear, then wait another five seconds, and it reappears. That's it. Now press play. Woop woop, look at that. We created a disappearing secret trash block. Trash block? Maybe I shouldn't be as excited for that as I am. Now that we have one secret block, it's time to create a pathway across the ocean. You can make some of the blocks invisible, but make it so you can still jump on them. You can also make other blocks visible, but you'll fall through. This makes it super, super tricky for our player. They will never know what they're gonna get. The level of trickiness <laughs> is up to you. Excellent, we've added our own custom script to an object. But what if we wanted to add a script already created by someone else? Hmm, this will actually make the process even easier. Let's try it by adding a kill script to the ocean floor. I know, I know, the name is not as PG friendly as we would all like, but it's just what it's called. If the player falls into the contaminated ocean, then game over. Not over, over, as you already know. Go back to the marketplace, then search for the kill script and select the first option. Go to the Explorer and rename the script to kill script. Then drag and drop it into the polluted ocean park. Now press play and test out whether you can cross the ocean or not. Boom, it's just that easy, you see that? It worked again. I hope you're starting to recognize you are a real game developer, okay? Because I see you. Now guys, before we wrap up, here's a quick reminder. Be sure to add a checkpoint at the end of your level so the player has a place to respawn. This is going to be so necessary because we keep making our obby harder and harder with each passing level. All right, gamers, you have learned so much in this video. Like, you quite literally, really understood the assignment, okay? 
Before we talk about what's next, I wanted to remind you that you can go back to levels one and two and change the scripts in our various parts and objects and continue to build out level three. That way, your game can be truly unique, just like you. Now that you've completed level three, go to File, Save to Roblox. This option will save the obby in Roblox Studio and on your online account. Please come back for video five, where we will learn how to add power-ups to our obby. We've been making our obby harder and harder. Now let's see how we can give our game players some advantages. Bye for now, and until next time, game on, family.